Microprocessors are everywhere. They're so prevalent in your life that you probably take them for granted, as long as they act the way they're supposed to. They control much more than your home computer. Every room in your house is filled with appliances and gadgets that contain these computers on a chip. Here's a perfect example of an embedded processor. Devices like this control everything from the brakes in your family's car, to the volume on your CD player, to the temperature in your classroom right now. Many processors are relatively simple. They're programmed when they're manufactured to handle only a few functions. The chip in this remote control, for example, can only change a few functions like a television's volume and channel. This is the kind of microprocessor that controls a computer's functions. It's more powerful and flexible than an embedded processor. It can be programmed with many different instructions to perform a variety of tasks, from playing games and word processing to creating art or accessing the internet. It's smaller than a dime, but it contains millions of transistors and performs millions of instructions a second. Where you and I might take a few seconds to add 27 and 39, a good microprocessor can do the same calculation in billionths of a second. How do microprocessors work? And how do engineers get them to do what they want them to do? The key seems to be giving the computer the right instructions. But that may not be as easy as it sounds. We discovered there's a real art to giving good instructions, whether you're talking to a computer or another human. Excuse me, can you tell me how to get to the main public library? You go down this street. Down this street. Down this street. I think that's main. You go all the way Highway 29. You go down Yacht. Hit um first. Left, down a couple of blocks. You make a right. Take a left. Follow Main. Which is Lincoln Avenue. Past the state courthouse. The street turns around like this. It's a big pink building. I think that'd be there. It's real noticeable. You can't miss it. Computers need very clear instructions. They only do exactly what you tell them to do, and you have to tell them to do it every time. Clarity is the real art of programming. We recently talked to a software engineer. So what is the art of computer programming? The art of computer programming is really getting this very stupid thing to be able to do creative things. Um, we don't think of computers as being stupid, but they are. They only know how to do certain things. So how do you do that? How do you get all this complex information and make it so a computer can understand? Computers have, they have a, a vocabulary, like we have a vocabulary. We're right. talking right now using words we both know. But it's not just words we both know. I could say, for example, words out of order. Um, it wouldn't make any sense to you to go, what are you talking about? Like, what? Exactly. So there's a certain structure, a sentence structure. We have to create words, put words together that make sense by rules that we both understand. Writing computers, computer programs is the exact same thing. It has a vocabulary. It has words we can use to communi communicate with the computer. What's the one thing that somebody should know about being a software engineer? I think the most important thing is being able to think logically. Being able to start with an ideal and be able to break that very large ideal into smaller little pieces. And then breaking those smaller pieces into yet smaller pieces. And understanding how to link all those pieces together so that one piece does something, the next piece does something else, and then finally you get the result that you expected. So you need to be able to think logically. The different parts of a microprocessor do different jobs. See, these jobs break down into three primary functions. Fetch, decode, and execute. Our robots here can help you understand how this works. But first, we have to slow it way down. Remember, this is all happening in millionths of a second. This is Fetch. It retrieves program instructions and data one at a time and passes them on to the next function, Decode. When Decode receives the instructions, it simply reads which operation is called for and sends that information to the correct function and execute. Execute then uses binary calculators to do the math. Remember, computers can only use ones and zeros. The results of the calculation are then output to your screen. And that's pretty much the story. Fetch, decode, and execute do these same tasks over and over again millions of times a second. If you look at a chip, it looks a lot like a miniature city with different sized blocks and streets. And just like in a real city, related functions are clustered in specific areas. This area is where Fetch is based. Remember, Fetch retrieves program instructions and data from the computer. Over there is where Decode prepares the data and instructions for processing. And Execute does the math in this area.